I've got a peace offering. Creating the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a lot more than just sticking Iron Man in a bunch of random films. Touché. From timelines to story connections, the production team behind these movies have worked tirelessly to include all types of little details to help connect movies and make the MCU feel as real as possible. Since all that hard work went into creating these small details, let's honor them by looking back at little moments, including Thor's touching dedication to Loki and the way Spider-Man Homecoming connects to Captain America besides the high school gym class video. Captain America has gone through quite the journey in the MCU, and so have the costume designers who dress the hero. In Avengers Age of Ultron, the Avengers A symbol appears on his uniform, but by the time he's butting heads with Tony Stark in Captain America Civil War, the symbol has been removed. As Captain America abandons his post as the nation's hero and goes into hiding, he also sheds his iconic star. We see this for his costume design in Avengers Infinity War. Well, everything comes back full circle for the final battle in Endgame. Not only does the star reappear on his chest, but Steve Rogers proudly wears the Avengers A on his shoulder once again. Not only does the costume represent Rogers' journey as a hero, but it also helps Marvel make bank off so many different toy designs for us to buy and collect. And speaking of Captain America, he made quite the mess in The Winter Soldier, sending the helicarriers crashing down into the Triskelion building. A mess like that would not only need to have a huge investigation, but take months of cleanup as well. All the cleanup was actually reflected in Spider-Man Homecoming. As Peter Parker and his decathlon team head to Washington, D.C., they pass a construction sign referring to the Triskelion cleanup. Turns out, there's no covering up a huge helicarrier crash in the capital of the United States. The movie was supposed to go even further when a deleted scene reveals the bus was set to drive by the crash site and have Parker, Ned, and MJ all comment on the huge disaster. Small details like this may flash by within a second, but they just show how dedicated the production crew is when scenes and or movies take place in similar locations. There is nothing like a good plant and payoff in a Marvel movie, especially when the first scene took place a few movies earlier. Case in point, the humorous exchange in Ant-Man and the Wasp where Ant-Man refers to Captain America as Cap. It was a matter of national security that Cap needed help. So. Cap? Cap. It's, it's what we call him. Then Endgame comes out and there's the Wasp herself having a dialogue exchange with Rogers and referring to him as Cap. We're on it, Cap. The look on Ant-Man's face really says it all. Either way, the moment not only provided a clever aha for Ant-Man and the Wasp fans, but it created another way for Hope and Scott to bond together. Something we hope to see more of if a third Ant-Man movie is ever announced. Sibling relationships are complicated. Just ask Thor, who has spent just as much time battling Loki as well as standing by his side. And despite his evil intentions in the first Avengers, Thor finds a way to mourn his brother following his demise in Thor the Dark World. If you pay close attention to Thor's hair in the movie, you'll notice that after Loki's sacrifice, he has a darker strain of hair braided into his own. Yep, you guessed it, Thor honors his brother by actually taking his hair and braiding it into his own. The little detail would have been more touching if Loki had actually perished. They often say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, even if the tree is located galaxies away. Despite never meeting until they were adults, the connections between Peter Quill and his father Ego were made pretty clear in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. During the flashback scenes with Ego, take a close look at the color scheme on his car. If the design looks familiar to you, it's because Peter's ship has the exact same color pattern. This makes us wonder what name Ego gave his sweet ride. We all know Star-Lord named his ship the Milano after Alyssa Milano, so maybe Ego used a name like Goldie, based off his real-life partner and a popular star in the 70s. The MCU is so in control of their movies that they pay attention to every single little detail. For example, take a look at the gym class scene during Spider-Man Homecoming. MJ's rebellious side is showcased in the scene as she reads a book during a class where you're supposed to be active. If you caught a glimpse of the cover, you'd see the title of Human Bondage. Well, this wasn't just a random title snagged off a shelf at Barnes & Noble. The book actually follows the story of an orphan who went to live with his aunt and uncle after his parents passed away. Sound familiar? Yeah, MJ is pretty much getting a crash course in the life of Peter Parker. Avengers Endgame had the tough task of going back in time, including an epic scene which took place during the events of the first Avengers movie. The movie had to match up scenes, costumes, and ensure everything fit, especially with millions of eagle-eyed viewers looking to spot any tiny mistake. 
Well, the movie producers went above and beyond, including some extra details we never expected. One of the best examples is when Thor has a conversation with Robert Redford's character, Alexander Pierce. May I ask you where you're going? The lunch and then Asgard. I'm sorry, you are. And we know for a fact that they do get some lunch, as all the Avengers partake in the classic post credit scene dining at the shawarma restaurant. And while that was the plan, we have to wonder if this altered timeline has the post-battle meal cancelled altogether. Captain America gets knocked out when battling his older self, Loki has disappeared, and Iron Man suffered some heart issues thanks to Ant-Man. Medic! You got some help? That could be the darkest timeline of all, one without the shawarma. James Gunn put a ton of detail in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Just look at the scenes with the Collector alone. They're jam-packed with easter eggs, hidden details, and small moments. One of the more impressive parts was a small detail that helped eliminate any plot holes people had with the movie. After Peter Quill gets arrested and is processed for jail, we see a digital on-screen guide for the character. While many of us were laughing when he flipped the bird, we may have missed the small line on the screen that stated Quill had a translator implant in his neck. This little detail makes it easy for Star-Lord to travel across the galaxy and come across all different types of aliens without any language barriers. The film must have been filmed with the same translator because we could understand everyone. Well, everyone but Groot. I am Groot! Guess the translator needs a firmware update. Black Widow is hinted at her history through many of the Avengers films, and while we wait for a full glimpse at her backstory, we only have these tiny details to live off of. One of the more subtle but great moments to Natasha's past comes in an early scene in Avengers Endgame. While she talks with Steve Rogers about the aftermath of the snap, take a look around at the desk and chairs. On one of the chairs, you spot a pair of ballet slippers. The ballet slippers connect directly to her childhood, where she was given false memories of being a professional dancer while secretly training in the Red Room. Why would she have those slippers now? Well, with half the population wiped out and little hope for the future, why not dance your worries away? The slippers will likely come back into play once the Black Widow solo movie gets released as well. Iron Man 2 was the MCU's first big sequel. In one of the craziest superhero coincidences ever, the events of The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America's thawing all take place within the same seven days, and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s involvement was chronicled in a comic book miniseries. While it may seem like Marvel shoehorned the timeline all into one neat little package, the movies themselves also alluded to the events. Take for example this scene in Iron Man 2. As Tony Stark sits, watch the news monitor as there's a recap of the Hulk's chaos and destruction. Minor details like this so early on in the MCU really helped lay the foundation for the future of the cinematic universe and the various ways all these films would connect. When Thanos started collecting some stones for his Infinity Gauntlet, he didn't go all willy-nilly just attacking everything in sight. He had a purpose for every stone he obtained, and the digital effects artist made sure to show it on the screen as well. Just look at the Infinity War fight scene between Thanos and Doctor Strange. When Doctor Strange transforms into multiple people, Thanos has to figure out who the real one is. He uses the Soul Stone for this purpose, and we see it light up on the gauntlet. One moment later, we watch the Power Stone light up as the illusion gets broken and Thanos takes advantage once again. The motion capture suit and details in Thanos is hard enough to bring to life, but the way the Infinity Gauntlet was portrayed was on a whole other level, and really made it feel like the most powerful weapon in the whole universe. After lacking a lot of backstory and depth in the first Avengers, the MCU went all in with Hawkeye, supplying him with a whole family, a farm, and everything. Well, at the end of the movie, we see his family again through a Skype call. Clint's wife gave birth to a baby boy, and his name is seen loud and clear on the custom onesie. Pay close attention to the middle name. Pietro is not some Barton family name. Clint chose it because that's the real name of Quicksilver, the hero who saved his life earlier in the film. A touching moment and a nice dedication to the Scarlet Witch's brother. And now, we have to wonder if, after the events of Endgame, he'll name his next child Natasha. Thor was going through a lot during the events of Endgame. It's only natural the dude was a mess for a majority of the film. Guess I am. And while we were distracted by the unkempt appearance from the God of Thunder, it was easy to miss a key detail Thor showcased when standing up to plan the time heist with the other heroes. As he goes to put eye drops in, you may notice he only places them in a single eye. The reason? His other eye is a fake. Remember how Rocket Raccoon gifted him the eye in Infinity War? I would have watched that. Well, the Russo brothers didn't lose track of that key detail as Thor woke up from a slumber and used an eye drop to help adjust to the light after he took his sunglasses off. 
We imagine the fake eye would have malfunctioned if he applied the eye drops to the mix. Ant-Man not only has the ability to shrink at will, but he knows precisely the right time to do so. Just look at the scene when Thanos attacks the Avengers headquarters in Endgame. As the windows blast open, Ant-Man shrinks himself down to avoid taking the impact of the blast. The smart move helped Scott Lang survive and live on to help fight in the battle against Thanos. The shot goes by incredibly fast, but a slow motion look showcases just how much detail went into the planning and special effects. With such a special effects heavy film, this could have been skipped or avoided. But the impact of the scene really works, and Ant-Man was the ideal choice for the moment because many of our heroes wouldn't have survived the blast at full size. The MCU version of Spider-Man has been intertwined with the Iron Man series more than anything else. Underoos. And the filmmakers wanted to make this clear by featuring even more than just Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. When Peter Parker walks through the halls of the Midtown School of Science and Technology, you can spot murals of some key scientists who helped shape the world as we know it. Among the images on the mural, look for a clear shot of Tony Stark's father, Howard Stark. Stark Industries has a clear impact on the whole MCU, and this little detail helps emphasize how important the relationship between Peter and Tony has become. The small detail wasn't even needed, but the picture mural also helps make the Midtown High School feel even more realistic. And of course, Tony Stark plays a father figure role to Parker, making the whole Howard image come full circle for all the characters. During Infinity War, we saw the instant effects of the snap take place in Wakanda, but Endgame expanded on this showcasing Hawkeye's experience with the whole ordeal. After practicing some archery with his daughter, Clint's whole family disappears. During the scene, pay close attention to the sound effects. In the first minute or so, you can hear a lot of birds chirping along with some general sounds of nature on his family farm. Are you doing this one? Yips. Here. Then, once his family turns to dust, the bird chirping slowly disappears as well. The movie brilliantly chose to eliminate any music and keep things to just the natural sound. Small details like this make the whole blip feel even more realistic and creates a sense of eerie danger. Some of the smallest details included in the MCU movies have no connection to other movies, but rather the star's personal lives. For example, during the Tony Stark and Pepper Potts scene in Avengers Infinity War, they discuss wedding dates and the date of August 27th gets suggested. The date may seem like a random one picked by the writers, but as we've learned, nothing is random in the MCU. The date is actually Robert Downey Jr.'s real-life wedding anniversary. He was married in 2005, and the wedding included guests like Keanu Reeves and Sting. To put the wedding date in perspective, Tom Holland was only 9 years old when Downey Jr. was married. Downey Jr. married Susan Levin, and the couple have two children together. In another great attention to detail, he actually has a Susie Q tattoo on his left shoulder for her. But the production team either covers it up or edits out the design when Stark wears a tank top. We imagine Pepper Potts wouldn't be too happy with another woman's name inked on his skin. Spider-Man Homecoming may have been mainly a Sony production, but the movie did a whole lot to show everyone it was part of the MCU. Just like Howard Stark in the hallway, there's another small detail in one of Peter's classrooms during the movie. If you look up on the wall, there's a collage of famous scientists and inventors. The last picture may cause you to do a double take because it's actually an image of Bruce Banner himself. When the guy's not causing a rampage wherever he is, he's actually a brilliant scientist. Sure, he helped create Ultron and brought a lot of danger to the world, but he also has advanced all types of research into a variety of topics, including gamma radiation. And yep, we're still sticking with Spider-Man Homecoming, a film that clearly went above and beyond to showcase little details. During the scene where Aunt May and Peter Parker enjoy a dinner together, pay attention to the exterior shots of the restaurant. Right next to the restaurant is a small building with Korean words written on the window. Well, if you read the English translation right under the window, you'll see it says the Korean Church of Asgard. So yeah, obviously Thor has had a big impact to the citizens of Earth. At least big enough for people to start their own church and truly worship the God of Thunder. Along with showcasing the church exterior, we would love to see at least one sermon. We could just imagine a lot of people shouting out, You are not worthy! Ooh, the whole sermon could be done to the tune of the immigrant song. Endgame helped tie up so many loose ends in the MCU. Steve Rogers got his dance, Thor found peace with his mom, and Tony Stark finally ended his beef with Captain America from their Civil War days together. And speaking of their fight, Civil War had some heated discussions between the two, with both hurling some pretty deep insults at each other. 
Rogers called out Stark for never making the sacrifice play, while Stark called out Rogers for telling him that everything special about him came from a bottle. Well, we all know how Stark could make a sacrifice play with his big snap at the end of the movie. Meanwhile, Rogers proved just how special he was by proving he was worthy enough to carry Mjolnir. It wasn't a serum that made the Cap worthy, but rather his good morals and decision to always do the right thing no matter what got in his way. Okay, now that we have all these covered, it's time to go back and watch the whole MCU for even more little moments. We cannot wait to see what Phase 4 has in store and how the smaller moments will tie into the rest of the MCU. Any great moments we missed, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great Marvel content.